Americans are so polarized that it's hard to imagine us agreeing on anything. But not too long ago, there was one thing that pretty much everyone supported. Willie, it's obvious that we don't share the same tailor. But we do share the same feeling about space technology, don't we? That's right. We probably disagree on most things. I agree with that. We're both convinced space technology can help all mankind. He means everybody. Kareem, we'll never see eye to eye on anything. Don't be so short-sighted. We can both see that space research benefits everyone. Okay, America agreed on two things. We liked the space program and making fun of short dudes. And both still captivate us today, especially space. From amazing things like the latest Mars rover to amazingly dumb things like the Space Force, we love the cosmos. As George Lucas said in Babylon 5, it's the final frontier. But lately, there's trouble up there. We've been spacebound since the 1950s making amazing progress and countless scientific discoveries. But for every advance, we've left something behind. Space junk. NASA estimates there are 18,000 large pieces and more than 120 million tiny pieces of man-made space debris in orbit. That is a terrifying amount of garbage in orbit. Not to be confused with the terrifying amount of garbage in Norbit, but it's too late to do anything about that. We have to move on. Humans have launched nearly 10,000 satellites into space, but as of January 1st, only about a third of them are still operational. As for the others, many were simply cheaper to abandon than to sustain, which is also the title of the Cheaper by the Dozen reboot, where Steve Martin slowly gets rid of the kids. Astronauts have accidentally lost a spatula, a glove, a mirror, and a bag filled with $100,000 worth of tools. Meanwhile, they've deliberately dumped most of their urine overboard, where it freezes into millions of ice crystals. Apollo 9 astronaut Rusty Schweikart said one of the most beautiful sights in space is a urine dump at sunset. So we know something about Rusty now. But I get it. If a cloud of crystallized urine floated past my window during quarantine, I'd probably love it too. A tiny piece of debris may not sound like anything to worry about, but as the old saying goes, it's not the size of the junk, it's the impact velocity at low Earth orbit. The debris is moving at about 10 times the speed of a bullet, so even the tiniest specks can cause severe damage. If you can think of a two centimeter ball bearing up in space, it's traveling at 17,000 miles per hour. Even a piece of debris the size of a small screw could destroy the space station. Yeah, weird little screws have been causing problems in space ever since Captain Kirk boldly went all the way with his first alien. Trust me, that woman didn't start out green. As we add more space junk, a single collision could lead to something called the Kessler syndrome. What space debris experts fear most is a chain reaction, where objects break apart in collisions and fragments go on to smash into other objects, creating more debris. The largest fear that we have is that we enter in some sort of cascading effect where one collision triggers the next one. And this is not, not anything that will, will happen within a microsecond like in the movie Gravity. No, it's something that would happen very slowly, like Ad Astra. Like, I don't care if you're Brad Pitt. No one wants to sit through two hours of your dad issues. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why should I care about space junk? My kid's not smart enough to be an astronaut. Well, you should care because we rely on satellites for things like global communication, GPS navigation, and weather data. And if that space infrastructure is destroyed, some of our technology could be sent back to the 1970s. It could also end the space program as we know it because an orbit filled with hypersonic shrapnel would make it impossible to successfully launch anything. Humanity would be trapped on Earth. So forget about trying to flee the planet when the alien spies finally reveal ourselves and conquer you. I mean, I mean, reveal themselves. Whew. Close one, Sam. <clears throat> the problems caused by space junk aren't just theoretical, they're already happening. This crack in an international space station window, it was caused by something the size of a fleck of paint. When a fragment hit the space shuttle Endeavour in 2007, it left a hole in the radiator that a bullet would have caused. In 2009, a privately owned American satellite and a dead Russian military satellite accidentally collided and created over 2,000 pieces of debris. The chances of those two satellites colliding tonight over Pittsburgh increased. Luckily, that was a near miss, but it could have been tragic. Pittsburgh has literally dozens of good people. 
Space junk is a tough problem to fix because there's no global legal system regulating orbit. We don't need a space force. We need space law. Tuesdays at 10 on NBC. And tune in this fall to Space Fire, Space PD, and Space Med, all from Dick Wolf's Space Chicago universe. We're more than six decades into the space age, and there's still no legal definition of space debris, so treaties don't address the issue. And countries have no legal obligation to remove their debris. Instead, all we have are unenforceable guidelines set up by the UN's Office for Outer Space Affairs, which I'm assuming is just Ashley Madison for horndog astronauts. So far, the UN's recommendations have generally been ignored or ineffective. Fortunately, there is some hope. Reusable rockets mean less junk left in our geosynchronous trunk, and astro nerds around the world are inventing their own ways to remove space trash. From a net that can tie up debris, to harpoons that can spear junk, to giant robot maids with vacuum cleaners. But even with these state-of-the-art innovations, we still need international regulations and cooperation to protect the planet's space infrastructure. Otherwise, we may face a grim future with no more space exploration, no more of the technology that makes our modern lives possible, and worst of all, no more beautiful golden showers for our brave astronauts. Let's do this for Rusty. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.